So what does a guitar unboxing have to do with being a DIY musician? Well... <laughs> Welcome to a very unplanned DIY music. Where today we are unboxing the Elisa's Fortex Wireless 2 guitar. Guitar, guitar, guitar. Um, I'm somewhat of a guitar holic I've had a lot of them. Vintage, miniature, modern. Um, and I owned the very first version of the Elisa's Vortex, and it had some promising features like the acceler acceler accelerometer, the flexibility, how it could be mapped to anything, but it was kind of clunky. It was wired only at that point, and it. Uh, felt like garbage. Um, it's literally the worst feeling keyboard I've ever touched in my life. It just felt junky and cheap and uh, like a plastic toy. Uh, didn't feel like a real instrument. So I've heard that this one, the Wireless 2, is a lot better. Uh, so let's find out. White box, a lot of empty space. I've seen that mentioned in other unboxings. I mean, yeah, these things could have fit in much less space than that. It's a strap, which I hear is too short for tall players. And then a bag with user guide, USB cable, wireless dongle, which I hear doesn't work great, very far away. Fortunately, I mostly play in my bedroom and only aspire to do coffee shop gigs. Um, anyways, let's get the phone out. Everybody who reviews this product is, in, is impressed by the feel of the bag that it comes in. My biggest question is why? It's uh, yeah, it's a nice bag, stitching, form-fitted to the product, but. Couldn't they have like spent another five cents and given us a gig bag instead of a disposable, nice feeling bag? Like I just don't understand the reasoning there. Um, it's definitely not a gig bag. You're not gonna be carrying it around in this thing. Uh, whatever. So there she is, Miss America. Um, okay, so I've owned a couple Roland Accents, a couple AXM9s, Yamaha KX5s, the vintage ones. Um, this body plastic and the feel of the construction is like they, they knew that most of their consumer base would be coming from Roland guitars, I guess, because this feels like the feel of it is very, very similar to a, a Roland guitar. Um, feels very similar to my Accent, because I've always got the black ones uh, of the Accent and Lucina, and they have this plastic feels like it was created in the same factory. Wouldn't be surprised if it was. Um, so the first Vortex had a really tiny pitch wheel. Uh, this feels much, much nicer. It's way bigger, it's got the tactile rubber uh, thingy coating rim on it. It lights up, which is of course nice. I've seen the big sustain button mentioned by Pink and the Guitar Cat. Uh, yes, it is a very nice sustain button, it's real big. That makes me wonder if it's like a space bar where it requires more than one sensor uh, because it's so large. I wonder if that'll be a failure point later on. Um, nice easy access to the ribbon. That's good. The, uh, the Roland Lucina AX09 put this big thing here where you had to, you don't have tiny little Japanese girl hands, which all the product demo videos would lead you to believe that's what it was designed for. The Roland Lucina AX09 represents the vision of synthesizers to come. 
you could barely get your hand in here um, because you had this giant block thing out here blocking your hand. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is good access. Can't comment on functionality yet, uh, but nice layout. Um, Active up down buttons, and then they have a tilt on off button, which is good. You didn't have that on the uh, the first gen Vortex. Um, things is like a program up down, and then they got eight uh, slider controllers. The uh, demos would really lead you to believe they think this is going to be used by people running the Hammond organ simulation, so you can pull your draw bars in and out. Um, it's definitely not as easily grabbable as a real draw bar. Have I ever touched a real draw bar? Am I imagining that? Might be imagining it. Um, anyways, and then these drum pads are, are laid out in a normal grid, which the Vortex Gen 1 and wireless version 1 had like a row of big pads and a row of small pads. It was really awkward and like on the angle of the body. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So, <laughs> there's definitely been some improvements since the Vortex V1, since this little uh, sticker back here labeling the ports came off on mine like immediately. Um, looked kind of bad without it. I don't know, I don't know, it looks like there's Either a plastic coating over that, or maybe maybe it's threatening to do the same thing and fall off like the first gen. Um, so yes, I've heard this mentioned. Strap button placement is real good, uh, though this is on a slight slope, so gotta watch out for that. Um, sometimes that can lead to the strap falling off the rear. Um, this one's a good placement, though. Mind-bogglingly, though. Like, this second compartment on the back, I guess you're supposed to use to store your USB cable? It was on the version one as well, and like it made no sense. Like, I don't know who would ever use this thing. Like, why would your cable be in there? What did, I, not sure how that made it to version 2, honestly. I don't think anyone ever uses that. If you are Elise's Vortex player and you use it, prove me wrong. And look, they have a second storage compartment next to the batteries. It's, it's like it's like they they didn't want the empty space in the guitar to just be empty space or hollow it out on the back or something. They felt the need to give it to you as a storage option. I just Every time I look at it, I just think drug smuggling. I <laughs> don't know anything about drugs, so probably not accurate. Okay, so I've heard that there was a texture on the black keys, and there is, and that is really smart. <laughs> but there's no texture on the white keys. <sighs> I d okay, I don't understand that. Um, I love the ivory feel keys on uh, higher end Roland boards. And um, actually they even do it on their Go piano now. And the ivory feel is great because it keeps your fingers from slipping. So yeah, props for putting texture on the black keys, but I, I don't have any idea why you wouldn't do that to the white keys. The white keys slip too, guys. Like, thank you from Roland, do it to all of them. Um, okay, so, okay, yeah, this is, this is definitely a much better, um, much better key bed than the Vortex version one, and I mean, you'd expect it to be costing $100 more, um, Pink and the Keytar, Pat mentioned that it was really springy. It definitely has a, an aggressive, an aggressive return to home position. That is for sure. Um, but I'm guessing they were finding people shredding, so they wanted to make sure that the action was fast. Uh, this one has aftertouch. I'm definitely looking forward to that because 
with Keybed Aftertouch, what you can do is you can play a note, and then after a second or so, um, kicks into Aftertouch, and you can assign that to something like vibrato, and that way you can press in a note, and then you can just dig in a little harder. You know, do that thing like the, the cello vibrato finger move that all keyboard players do anyway, even if it doesn't do anything, and uh, it'll actually do whatever you've assigned that to. So, uh, this thing definitely shows fingerprints like crazy, as I'm getting fingerprints all over it. Uh, I mean, I just washed my hands, so I'm not like super greasy right now or anything, but uh, yeah, it's, that's pretty gross, but you know, happens on black finish guitars also. All right, so, Let's uh, get this thing up and running, and then I'll give you some thoughts after I've played with it for a bit. Well, one of the things I was most interested in was uh, using it with the iPad. Um, you can see here with my uh, official Apple crazy expensive dongle that they make you buy in order to plug in anything that's not a proprietary connector. Uh, I got my Vortex Wireless plugged in there and it just works. This is Geo Shred, uh, Jordan Rudess's app. And uh, seems to work great. No noticeable latency that I can tell. Um, feedback. I feel like I'm standing next to an app. What's going on? Uh, turn the volume down. <laughs> so by default uh, on this app, the pitch, the ribbon is filter, um, as is the, the tilt. Um, pitch, that, volume, they're all mapped fine. None of these sliders do anything. And the drum pads are just seemingly random notes. Um, sustain also doesn't seem to do anything, but there's different play modes on this and I suspect that uh, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. So let's move over to GarageBand because I have more familiarity with that. So this pitch bend wheel up here on the top is, uh, I really like it. Um, and I didn't expect to because I didn't like it up there on the first vortex and I always just used the ribbon as pitch. Um, but the size and the grippiness of this, it really does make it useful on a whole nother level. And um, and you know, this this design, having the pitch wheel on top like this, was actually from Jan Hammer. Um, he modded his KX5 Yamaha guitar back in the day. He didn't use the ribbon at all, and he, he put in a wheel. Uh, I don't I mean, maybe not him, somebody did for him. They cut a hole in the side of the KX5's uh, neck and put a wheel there, and that's how he did all his guitar technique. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, I'm I'm digging this pitch bend wheel. Um, I see myself see myself using that, but uh, I still like the ribbons because you know you can do hammer on and pull off technique. Uh, at least you could on the AX synth. I've actually noticed that that it doesn't drop to a default value when you let go. It uh, you take your finger off, it just stays wherever it last was, which is weird. Also the pitch bend on um, GeoShred, I can't get to stop being a full octave for some reason. No clue why. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, try some uh, 
Try some guitar here. See what we get. Doesn't seem like Aftertouch does anything by default in either of these programs. And those are definitely descending MIDI notes, which I mean makes sense because if you're on a drum patch, MIDI notes, certain MIDI note would be a certain drum, so that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't. Not uh, not getting anything from modulation on this synth guitar and garage band. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, you know the thing about the Vortex, though, is there's an editor on the PC um, where you can change all this stuff. Uh, well, that's interesting. I'm accidentally getting a muted sound. How did I do that? Oh. So... Stand corrected. So the modulation apparently determines how muted it is on this sound in the garage band. Like I said, it sticks on whatever you last touched on the ribbon. I hope that's configurable. Turn that off. I think it was on the original Vortex, because I wouldn't have been able to use it the way I used Pitch Bend if it wasn't. But yeah, like, all the way down is wide open, all the way up is fully muted. with the editor some and maybe make a follow-up video to this later but uh, yeah so wireless works great with the uh, official USB Apple adapter to your iPad and uh, I uh, definitely as Pink and the Guitar Cat said uh, just walking around with this thing with no cord on it <laughs> it's amazing I definitely don't ever want to go back to being tethered again so Good job, Alesis. Um, way to take this thing up to the next level. Definitely feels a lot like a Roland. So what does a guitar unboxing have to do with being a DIY musician? Well, guitars, well, they're kind of DIY just in general in the sense that, uh, you know, they're either ridiculed or uh, you know, it's just, it's not, there is no clear path for the guitarist. You have to blaze your own trail. You have to find your own way with it. Um, you know, we all can't all be Jeff Abbott and just have, you know, amazing shredding skills where people will respect you even though you're bald and middle aged. <laughs> You're gonna do so but uh, part of my being a DIY musician is uh, as soon as I found out about my first guitar it's been a love affair spanning decades I just won't quit and uh, I recently saw the Roland AX Edge and it's uh, it's just it's not for me um, I don't like 49 key guitars. 
I had two AX synths, kept trying to make it work, and they're just too big. It just doesn't doesn't make any sense to me. Um, smaller, smaller form factor, fewer keys is uh, is definitely more up my alley, and uh, not really fond of the glam metal look either. I did recently find out about the Vocaloid guitar, which is a product only distributed in Japan by Yamaha. I became, became kind of close to wanting to buy one of those, but uh, you know, its main thing is singing in Japanese in a synthesized anime girl voice. Don't really think I'd have much use for that, and um, and its MIDI features and any of its features really were kind of unclear. Also, it was like six hundred plus dollars to import it from Japan, since you know they're not uh, selling it in the states for obvious reasons. And the design is—I uh, don't know—I don't think they'll ever beat the Korg RK100. Not the S, not the new one. The original Korg RK100, still the sexiest guitar design ever. It's perfect. It's like the Fender Strat. It's iconic. There will never be a better guitar design. It's very sad how they changed it when they released the RK100S, but that guitar is now gone also. So this here and the uh, Roland AX Edge are, other than the Vocaloid, the only three guitars on the market right now. Guitars tend to go through periods of time where there's a bunch of them, and there's a dry spell where like they die off to nothing. Um, fortunately, it doesn't seem like we're back there quite yet, but uh, yeah. I sold my last Roland a AX synth when uh, they had just been discontinued, and I doubled my money on what I paid on that one. Uh, which is the first time I've ever not lost money on a guitar. Yep. And, uh, see you next time on DIY Music.